the tuples are almost same like how we deal with list so only difference that you need to understand is to the parenthesis a pair of parenthesis with no elements will create the empty list tuples will not allow you to replace the elements hello everyone i welcome all of you to the first session on tuples guys in today's session i'll be discussing about the important chapter that is tuples in the last session we have discussed in detail in fact about the list so what is tuples then so let's understand how exactly the tuples are different from list and what do we do with tuples without wasting your much of your time let me get into the session so what is that i'll be discussing i'll be discussing the tuples in python then how do we create this tuple along with that tuples versus list and traversing a tuple is what i'm going to discuss in this session so in fact this chapter is very very small so let me not take much of your time to give you the content right so let me get into the content round so how exactly i will be creating the tuple let's start without uh, discussing this first let me just tell you guys please remember i will be using the square brackets when it comes to the concept of list but when it comes to the concept of tuples i should remember this parenthesis if i use this parenthesis you should understand that is tuples the tuples are almost same like how we deal with list so only difference that you need to understand is so the parenthesis guys that is the first difference that you need to understand then how do i create the tuples so let me just write t t is equal to parenthesis open parenthesis and close parenthesis this is how i will be creating the empty tuples this is how i will be creating the empty tuples is what you need to understand right then how do i create the tuples with integer so please understand so guys this is how i will be creating the tuples with only single element but if i write multiple elements guys this is an example for that suppose if i write like this so i will be creating the tuples for integers i'll be creating the tuples for integer right then how do i create the tuples for string the same thing what we did for the list suppose if i have tuples so i will be writing like this right so this is for the string i'm creating the tuples right this is what you need to understand i'm storing it in a t so t is a tuple which stores the string so can i have multiple data elements inside the tuples of course you can have so guys so i can also write like this so t is equal to 1 2 i can have a character and i can have a string so like this i can have multiple data objects i can store inside the tuple is what you need to understand what is that i should remember in this slide so please remember this parenthesis rest everything is same as list what we have done right moving on to the next one before that i have some important point so tuples are immutable tuples are immutable sequence you can't change the elements of the tuple very important point to be noted here so guys what is the meaning of it so in the list when it comes to the concept of list let me just erase everything for all of you so guys i have tuples right so 1 comma 2 comma 3 so i have list so i i have list square bracket 1 comma 2 comma 3 right so when it comes to list so list is mutable but when it comes to tuple so it is immutable this is immutable what is the concept of immutable so it you cannot replace this value with the help of index with the help of index so for example i if i want to change uh, if i write like this so what is the meaning of it so this is the index zero is the index this so guys if i write like this i want to replace one with oh sorry i have already one so i have i want to replace 10 with one then can i do that so this is not possible with respect to tuples but can i do that for the list yes you can do that for the list right so this is what i will call it as mutable this is what i will call it as 
immutable. So tuples are immutable is what you need to understand, right? So then what is the next concept that I have? So please check out. So I have, how do I create tuples, which I have already explained. So please observe here. Guys, to create a tuple, put a number of expressions separated by commas in the parentheses. Obviously, that we have already studied in the previous sessions. If you want to have multiple data objects inside the tuple, obviously, you should separate it with the help of comma, right? Suppose, how do I, if I want to create the empty tuples, then how do I do that? Please observe here. So, T is equal to parenthesis, open parenthesis and close parenthesis. A pair of parenthesis with no elements will create the empty list. Is it list or tuples? Come on, everybody. So it's a tuples that you will be creating with no elements is what you need to understand, right? Please observe the second line that we have. So here I have inserted the values. So if you want to create the tuples with values, so you will be following the syntax, right? So you understood how do you create the empty tuple and also you understood how do you create the tuples with values, right? So this is the syntax to create the tuple which we have already discussed, right? So guys, please observe. So this is a function. Please observe, this is a function. This is a function which is predefined functions, right? I'll be discussing about this in the coming slide. Right, uh, I have the topic that will help me to create the tuple with single element, right? So. Can I do that? Yes, of course you can do that. So T is equal to open parenthesis and close parenthesis with only one element. If you print this, your value is just this. You have only one, right? So this is how we will be creating tuple with single element. So there is no much uh, great thing about it. So guys, the next thing is creating a long tuple. So if you have multiple elements, if you ask me, so what do you consider it as a long? So there is no specific number that I can tell you. So if you cross this limit, it will be treated as long. So there is no specific number that is defined, okay? If you have more than, more number of objects, this is what I will call it as an object. If you have more number of objects, then obviously it will be treated as long tuple is what you need to understand at this point of time, right? So moving on to the next one, creating a nested tuple. So tuple inside the tuple is what we have considered it as a nested tuple. Guys, so how do we do that? Please observe here. Suppose if I write T1, T1 is the name of the tuple that I'm considering. So please observe, this is the tuple that I have, main tuple. So inside this tuple, I have one more tuple. Observe that please. So that is what this concept is what I will call it as a nested tuple. All these concepts are quite similar with respect to the list. All these things we have already discussed, only the difference that we have is parentheses and the square brackets when it comes to the list and tuples. So moving on to the next concept that we have. So guys, how do we create the tuple using the existing sequence? Even this also remains same, even in the list we did the same thing so guys we have to use the function tuple right inside that we have to mention the existing sequence existing sequence in the sense yes is equal to hello is what i have taken in the previous session right so guys if i just write t is equal to tuple t is equal to tuple hello or i can also just take s right so i can also take s so this will be converted into tuple is what you need to so so like this, it will be creating the tuple for all of you. This is what you need to understand with the help of the existing sequence, right? So this is how I will be creating the tuples with the help of existing sequence. Then what is the next thing that I will be learning in this session? So you will be uh, learning like how exactly you will be reading the values for the tuples from the keyboard, from the keyboard in the sense, like from the user. So all these examples, what we have discussed, so this is like, you know, you have typed it during the coding. A programmer has typed it, but I want the user to enter the values to the tuple. Then how do we do that? So let's have a 
example for that. So guys, so you all know that with the help of the input function, so you will be able to read the values. But by default, whatever you are reading, it will be in the form of string. But I don't want the content to be in the form of string. I want it to convert it into the concept or the types into the tuples. Then how do I typecast it? Typecast in the sense you are converting the data from one type to another type. Then how do I do that? So please listen to me carefully. So I will be using the function that is tuple. I'll be using the function that is tuple. So whatever the value that I will have, so this function will have the value that is entered by the user. That will be converted into the tuples form with the help of this function. And then it will be stored in the T1 value. It will be stored in the T1 value. So T1 is treated as tuple now. Right? So that's what you need to understand when you are reading the values from the user. Right? Moving on to the next concept that we have similarities between tuple and list. This we have already discussed. So you will be having the length indexing and slicing and membership operator so these concepts are similar when it comes to string list and tuple so you will be using the function that is len so which will give you the length of the tuple so in the same way you have indexing you will be using the same indexing 0 1 2 3 4 5 it goes on when you have the indexing, so it is obvious that you can also perform the slicing operation. So slicing in the sense what? You will be splitting the main tuples into subtuples. So slicing is also remains same like how we did for the string as well as list. So guys, and also membership operator. So same thing. So we have in and not in. So guys, so all these concepts are same whatever we have discussed we have been discussing from strings as well as in the list and also it's the same in the tuples right we have uh, concatenation and replicator operator so again so concatenation will perform the addition of q tuples so like how we did the list so replicator operator also performs the same thing for example i have tuple t1 so what is that i have one two three so, and I have tuple 2, that is T2, so 4, 5, 6 is what I have. So, if I perform T3 is equal to T1 plus T2, so this is what I will call it as a concatenation operator. So, what exactly the concatenation operator is performing? So, please understand, whatever the item that I have in the T2 will be appended to the T1. So, for example, if I print three, T3, so my elements will be like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is what I will be getting once I perform the concatenation operator between two tuples. The same way I have replicator operator. Suppose if I perform T1 star 3, so what is that I'm going to get? So, guys, the content whatever I have inside t1 will be replicated three times inside the tuple is what you need to understand for example if i print let me just store it on t2 as of now you just imagine t2 is empty right so after performing this operation if i print t2 my output will be so 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 1 comma 2 comma 3 is what i'm going to get after performing the replicator operator Right? So this is how my concatenation and replicator operator is working and also accessing the individual elements. So guys, you will be able to access the individual elements, whatever you have inside the tuple using the index. What exactly it means? Are, right? So I have the tuple T1. Let me consider this tuple T1. I have 1, 2, 3. Suppose if I want to check how exactly it is represented in the memory. 1, 2, 3. So it has got the index 0, 1, 2 and the name of the tuple is T1, right? If I write T1 of 0, T1 of 0, so what is that I am trying to represent? So this particular part, right? What do I have? I have 1. So this is how I will be able to access the elements whatever I have, I have inside the tuple is what you need to understand, right? Moving on to the next concept that I have, tuple versus list. So guys, 
Cupels are not mutable is what you need to understand. This concept we have already discussed in the beginning slides. Cupels will not allow you to replace the elements, but list will be able to do that. That is one of the concepts that you should remember. You can ask me, so what is the benefit that I will get with the concept of mutable and immutable? When we are using the concept of tuples, it is immutable. It is not allowing you to replace the content. So it enhances the security. It enhances the security level when we compare to the list. So that is the advantage that you can assume if we are using the concept of tuples than list, right? So by thinking, by understanding this, moving on to the next one, traversing a tuple. The same concept what we use in the list, the same concept we are using here, we are using a for loop, right? So for i, what is that? For i in t1, t1 is what tuple, let us understand t1 has got 10, 20, 30. So this is what I have. So I will have a print statement here inside the for loop. So I will print i. So what exactly it is doing? So i is here right now i has got the 10 so i am printing the i value so like that i will be accessing all the elements whatever i have inside the tuple one by one till it reaches the last element that i have in the tuple is what you need to understand when it comes to the concept of traversing in the tuple what is the next concept that i have thank you for all of you listening to me so guys uh, it was a small and great session for all of you so we have discussed more than a half chapter of uh, tuples guys i will be coming in the next session with the predefined functions that i can perform some of the operations with respect to the tuples before that i'm breaking the session here just wanted you to understand the basic concepts of tuples let me not confuse all of you by explaining both basic concepts as well as the predefined methodologies or the functions that i have with respect to the tuples by saying this i'll sign off for the day thank you very much like the video share it with your friends thank you bye bye